Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of Creative Writers and Illustrators and my guest for the day is Vishali Shroff who's come out with this fab book called Tatum Tatum. Welcome Vishali. Thank you so much Shamla. I love the title. The moment I heard the title, the way it sounds, I'm like I have to read what Vishali is <laughs> And I think it's really wonderful that you have taken nuggets of information from Indian history and woven them into a book. So how did this book come about? Uh, long story. Most of my books start with some of my travel experiences. And this one was no different. And um, I, had, um, I had gone to a literature festival in, in Bhopal, actually. And when I was there, I had decided that I'm going to visit the Bimbetka Caves. So uh, before the Lit Fest started, early morning, 5 o'clock, set off for Bimbetka. And when I was uh, looking at the cave art, you know, the fabulous cave art that was there, I was, and I was trying to interpret what was drawn on the cave walls. And I started, you know, uh, it sort of started seeming like I was communicating with my ancestors, you know, as weird as that sounds, you know. And uh, I thought I was having conversations with them and then I realized that, you know, is that a language, you know, or was this where uh, languages began, where languages were born, uh, you know, and uh, I didn't do anything after that. I just left it at that thought. And later that year, again, I traveled to Dholavira, which is uh, the Harappan uh, site in Kutch. And there I, I learned about the Indus Valley script which is uh, extinct. Uh, and I saw the, the plaque that they have, the placard they have over there uh, in the script. And, and there, was, there was a prize of $10,000 if anybody can decipher it or anybody can decipher the language. And I'm like, okay, you know, earlier I saw the cave art, which was probably the beginning of languages. And here I am at Dhola Vira, which is you know, which is where I'm learning about the death of a script or a language. And I'm like, languages are living entities, you know, you know, they, they, they are born and they grow and evolve like everything else and they die too. Uh, and I thought that was a, that need to be captured. And, and I thought there is so much more to languages than just being a communication tool. Uh, you know, and uh, that's where the journey for this book began, actually. I never knew I was, you know, that it was going to be Tatung Tatung. And I never knew the the kind of stories that were going to be a part of this book. I just knew I wanted to write it. That's all. Before we go further, you should quickly tell our readers what this, this book is all about. Okay, Tatung Tatung and other amazing stories of India's diverse languages published by uh, Penguin India is a book about India's not just linguistic diversity, but dying linguistic diversity. You know, we are a country uh, which has 22 official languages, but we have more than 19,000 mother languages. So while I'm not a purist who says that, no, we must speak in our mother language and we must uh, you know, only talk in our state language and things like that. No, I mean, English is my bread and butter. So I will speak in English. I will write in English. And uh, uh, but at the same time, our our languages, our mother languages are an emotion. You know, when I when I tell somebody in my family, came Cho, because I'm a Gujarati and, you know, versus saying hello, you know, there's a difference. You feel a connection which you don't feel uh, while you are talking in English. So, and also these languages, our languages hold stories and a lot of indigenous knowledge that does not exist in any other language. So there is a lot at stake, you know. Uh, so this book is important. It's almost like a, a call for action to people that while we go about speaking and communicating in our functional languages, we must put in an effort to protect and preserve our mother languages too. Absolutely. I totally agree with what you say. And I'm very happy you wrote this book because I think it's time somebody did 
something about it. I mean, people are doing it in uh, bits and pieces, but we need, I think, uh, uh, a nationwide plan to preserve and celebrate the regional languages. And I think whatever we do, it's never enough. You know, there's, there's, there's just so much which needs to be done because we are so diverse. Now, uh, in two places in the book, you mentioned the need for inclusion of regional languages. Uh, you, know, you said that they, they are a must for seeking jobs. Otherwise, uh, you know, uh, people will lose out to dominant yeah. languages. Yeah. What are your thoughts yeah. on this? Okay, so um, socioeconomic problems are huge. And language is one subject. It's not just a link. While we are, we linguistics is a science in itself, and you know, languages are are very politically driven. Okay, not just in our country, in everywhere. Okay, so like you know, you must have read the chapter where how our country is div divided into states based on linguistic boundaries, right? So it's all politically driven, you know, and and most people when they what most people need a livelihood everybody needs a livelihood everybody needs money to survive everybody needs a job to earn that money and today wherever you go for a job you know first question they will ask you aapko english aati hai you know do you know english nahi aati or at least you do you know the state language do you know hindi do you know gujarati do you know you know tamil or telugu or whatever is your state language and if you do not know that you are likely to not get that job because they they need somebody who can speak a language that is that can be that's common to most of their customers or clients because they also have to survive so that i don't see anything wrong there but what happens is so, so for survival everybody almost stops or moves away from their mother languages and starts learning and speaking and using uh these uh dominant languages like english or hindi or whatever the job requires uh and slowly that the mother language fades away in time and is almost go starts you know it starts losing the number of speakers and eventually it dies so that is the life cycle of a language now where where you are coming from what you said you know that we need our government our state governments our central government needs to create more jobs which people can use their languages uh, you know there need there need to be jobs where people can speak in gujarati or the people can speak in tamil or can speak in gondi or koro or any other language unless and until there are opportunities for people to have a life livelihood and give their families a good life uh, you know this movement this language shift is inevitable right uh, you know your book also reveals a connection between uh, hindustani and gandhiji's uh, assassination it also puts a spotlight on regional heroes like uh, potti shri ramulu who kind of sacrificed his life for, uh, for his state yeah. it's, it's, yeah. it's it's interesting how much people have done in the past for uh you know i wouldn't say revival i think for just keeping a language alive right yeah for survival of languages for for because what happens is your ideation happens in your mother language when we are born we don't we are not born thinking in english unless it's our mother tongue and people around us are speaking english or other languages we learn to look at the world around us in our mother language we start forming our own visual and uh oral vocabulary in our mother language you know mother language is one language that is never taught to us yes. uh formally yes. right we learn it we learn it on our own because of repeated listenings uh to stories to songs to lullabies uh you know to to have getting instructions from elders in our family and so on and so forth so our cognitive abilities are, are rooted in our mother language now suddenly when we have to shift are learning you know that ability suffers so when we are talking about these people you know who have spent their entire life ideating learning uh, you know creating literature and an entire uh, knowledge base in a certain language and then they are asked to move yes. it's you know it is uh, it goes against our uh, 
even our constitution that tells us that we have the freedom to express in our own language you know and that's how even the bangla movement happened an entire population of more than 40 million people were asked to suddenly speak in a different language and you know and then there is no education in that language there is no official document in that language there are no books in that language so how does one grow so these people i feel um were instrumental in in keeping the not only their languages alive they when somebody stands up for their own language you know you're creating uh you know you're you're being a role model for other languages as well you know that if so and in in all my books actually you know whether it is uh, you know the adventures of padma and a blue dinosaur or even sita's chitwan you'll find names of a lot of people because i feel these are the real heroes you know and they will they are so unsung they nobody will ever talk about them or know about them you know whether they are language activists whether they are people who are uh, creating uh, dictionaries in languages that are moribund or going extinct and uh, so many of these amazing heroes that we need and only because of them that we are still as diverse as we are uh they're just doing their job silently they, yes yes going and they are so the passionate yeah. about this you know and we need these people in our society and not just that we need to support them and in whatever little way we can you know i'm not saying we should all all be part of their movements and join them but in our little ways we can own you know support them by ensuring that we are we continue to be speakers of our languages right? that's the least thing we can do for ourselves yeah that's the least thing. The that's the least we can do. yeah yeah we, to be part we shouldn't be part of the chain which kind of breaks off we should be the part of the Correct. chain which kind of continues to link Correct. yes absolutely i totally agree with you on no, this uh, my amazing discovery was the futuristic thinking you know one of the chapters you cover uh, is on the formation of puducherry so the wording of the people who kind you know the, the final document uh, uh, written and signed before the cherry became a part of yeah. it, uh, the wording mm -hmm. yeah. when the french uh, it says language shall remain the french language shall remain the official language of the establishment so long as the elected representatives of the people shall not decide otherwise i'm like mm -hmm. how did these people even think that imagine the possibilities of uh, uh, where or uh, what the journey of a language can be isn't it yes and puducherry is one of the places where of course you know the, the number of speakers are on decline hmm. uh, you know that is that the fact remains but having said that uh, it's a place where there is still a very thriving uh, community of french speakers you yes. know yes. you will you will you will see a traditional old grandma you know sitting in a, a kanjivaram and with a you know with some gajra and suddenly she will speak some fluent french and you will be like what you know you'll be so awestruck but but that's that's how she's grown up you know she's seen her life all her life she's been speaking in french and uh, the they have so much literature in french language and uh, they have a community where they are teaching also people to so that in in with the objective of increasing the number of speakers local local french speakers but again there are not many readers for that literature there are not many takers because uh, people are moving on to uh, you know other popular languages for jobs and they are moving out of puducherry in fact there is there are there is one part uh, of uh, of puducherry where people are moving to france right now to join their relatives who have already there because you know uh, there are some policies which still allow you to get a french passport and things like that so uh, but yeah it we still need these are still languages these are still spaces where we can preserve and there is a chance that you know this this community will survive yes you know yes and and it's important for these communities to survive because we are we are social human beings we don't live in isolation we need to communicate and we need to communicate in a way whereby we can connect and at an emotional level at a uh, you know and at a level where we can feel that we belong and that can happen you know and languages 
is that link you know like language is our identity when i say in fact we use the language name to to give our identity out like say okay i'm an i'm a gujarati or somebody else will say that they are a parsi or somebody else will say that i'm a marathi it's our language right and just by the language you can almost uh, say okay what kind of festivals do they celebrate what kind of food do they eat what kind of uh, you know traditions do they follow i'm not stereotyping but or generalizing but i'm just saying that this it is an identity that is associated with a certain culture you know so language is you know central language is important and i i'm just uh, this book uh, is written with the hope that we continue to uh, you know uh, engage in uh, conversations that help us keep our languages alive and this is one of them yes, i hope so too now your book puts yes. a spotlight on uh, baltu radio service uh, the central yeah. gondwana uh, network voice uh, a radio which strives for the uh, gondi tribe now how relevant yeah. do you think radio is as a medium to reach out to people uh, especially in the age of internet you know everything is available at the touch of a button everybody's got a phone but uh, you know it's unlike the previous days where people had all the time in the world to actually sit and engage to what the radio had to say there are so many right. asking for your time today so uh, the gondi tribe okay these are more than 3 million people who live in for, for inside the forest mm -hmm. okay where there is no broadband no wifi no internet mm -hmm. okay and these people do not know other languages and other people do not know gondi mm -hmm. so how do they communicate with the outside world and since gondi is not an official language it doesn't have an official status uh, there are no official documents in their languages there is no official script there are no schools that teach gondi there are no books written in gondi so even the children growing up they don't know what they have to they have no choice but to either learn uh, go to a school that's teaching in telugu or hindi hindi or english right and those schools are really far away in the towns and cities so how do these people communicate their grievances how do they ensure that they have water supply or they have some electricity or they have food uh you know so uh, shubhranshu choudhary uh, was a language ac activist was a very strong uh, supporter of gondis and he started this bultu revolution and uh, where bultu means bluetooth so what they do is uh, you know anybody uh, you know who who has a complaint or has a problem that needs to be solved they they just record it using their phone and it is relayed into the uh, their office which is a cg swaranet office and someone over there receives it and they understand gondi mm -hmm. they translate it to other languages like english or hindi and put it back on their website and say you and i listen to it and we are able to help them so we respond that okay we we i can help with the hand pump in their place i can help uh, with the midday meals or and these people again translate that to gondi and tell them that okay help is on the way uh, you need not worry your problem is solved and you know so that's i thought that was amazing right that how this is technology put to best use uh, you know and this has completely changed uh, the life of the gondis and uh, per day they just started with two calls five calls now they receive thousands of calls per day so i i, I thought this yeah funding which is needed to actually keep it yeah. uh, keep the service going yeah and he was like god sent for them right and and these are the stories i feel we need need to reach out to children to readers to everybody that it's possible you know that there is there's always hope there is always something that you can do to improve a situation you know and to help people and and um, and this was a brilliant example and not just that they are also creating dictionaries in the gondi language they have applied for gondi to be uh, uh, a, a part, uh, an official language in our constitution but we don't know when that will happen but in the interim they are 
they need to make a strong case that yes, we are, you know, millions of people here who speak Gondi and we deserve an education, we deserve jobs, we deserve a, a proper livelihood at, for, you know, for all our, for our entire community. And we need to be counted because if if I if nobody knows about the Gondi language, it means that nobody knows about the Gondi people. Right? These people don't exist for the rest of the country. Yeah, yeah you and you that is why, existence. Yes. 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 And and that that's so it's important that people are aware that there are thousands of other languages and, and even and thousands of speaking people speak languages that you don't. And but they are people just like you. Yes. And they need to be acknowledged, right? <laughs> so we're running short of uh, time. Yes. And I would like to read out uh, two passages, short passages. And you'll have to give a quick reply and then we will disperse. Okay. okay. So, okay. Uh, okay. you know, I, I found you shared your thoughts beautifully when you say, when we stop narrating stories to the next generation, stop singing songs and humming lullabies, to, uh, to babies, the language is on its path to extinction and the survival of the language rests on the shoulders of the handful of remaining speakers. And the other passage which I liked was, in this circle of life and death of these languages, there's much more at stake with the loss of each language than just words and sounds. I think just that just kind of uh, embraces a whole and lot of thoughts. Yeah. Yeah. Putting it is putting the onus on the speakers to do their best, yeah. and enjoy yeah. and celebrate the richness. Yes, right? yes, yes. And I, and I'm and I'm so grateful to you for reading every word of this book and you know enjoying it and the way you are. You're speaking like me, and we are having conversations like you know we you've been a part of my journey. And um, thank you so much, Amla, for you know, being so involved and in, in not just this one, I know every book that you, uh, you know, you read and we have these conversations, you, you go so deep into it. And uh, I really, you, Charlie. I, I'm really glad you wrote this book. And you know, I, I'm, I'm sorry, I took a long time. But what to do even, uh, 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 you know, all the links you've given at the back of the book, the bibliography is so <laughs> And then I kind of got diverted into reading those. And, you know, the shunting between the bibliography and the main chapters kind of uh, uh, took time. But, no, but that's the idea, right? And I'm so glad that you are reading the bibliography because, you know, that's the actual, you, you can only... I can only write so much, unfortunately, you know, and and that is why we have these references that, oh, there's so much more to know and there's so much more to read. Please, you know, please read about, you know, these people who are actually doing the work. I am just, I'm not even an expert. I'm just trying to take, you know, what these other people are doing, you know, amazing work and trying to take them to more people so that, you know, others are also inspired enough to, you know, start their own language movements or at least, like they said, just keeping their own language alive in their own homes, you know, then we'll have more homes speaking that language and then, you know, it, it will grow and grow and grow and we want that. <laughs> Each one of us just needs to speak the language. Yes, the yes, we need to. <laughs> Thank you, Vaishali. Thank you, <laughs> Thank you Shambhala. It was a pleasure. Thank you.